Hello, I'm Matty and I'm out and about today because spring has finally sprung. The sun is in the sky and an explosion of colourful flowers are shooting up from the ground. Now is the time to head out with your camera and shoot some flowers at a local park or even in your own garden. I'm here to give you 10 top tips to help you get the most out of your images. So let's get started. Because flowers are close to the ground, many photographers attempted to take the camera off the tripod and try and shoot handheld. This is a mistake because tripods are the photographer's friend. They keep the camera steady and rid the frame of any camera shake or blur. However, if your tripod simply won't get you low enough to the ground, there is a technique you can try. Take the camera off and remove the centre column. Pop it back in, upside down. You can then reattach your camera upside down and capture a true worm's eye view of your flower. If you're shooting with the lens that came for the camera, I've got some good news for you. Kit lenses are actually really good at focusing close to a subject and can focus typically between 25 and 30 centimetres away. That means when you zoom the lens in, it should be good enough to get you a nice, close, intricate shot of a subject. However, if you want to invest a little more in your close-up photography, think about getting a macro lens. Macro lenses offer a one-to-one -one ratio. That means they shoot in real-life size. What's more, most macro lenses have a fast maximum aperture, typically f2.8. That means even in low light, you can get a fast shutter speed. A common mistake photographers make when trying to get that perfect close-up flower head shot is to actually get in too close and block out any natural light. Don't worry, there's some accessories you can use to fix this problem. The first is a pop-up reflector. I prefer to use a smaller one because it's easier to manage in dense woodland. All you need to do is angle it so it catches the sun and bounces the light back into the subject. You can also use artificial light little LED torches so you can get the pop onto the top of your camera, fill in any shadows and give a good strong light source. Now it's very rare that you'll line up the camera, click the shutter and get the perfect shot first time. Instead take some test shots. What you might need to do is some gardening. That means moving twigs, stray blades of grass, all those little things that can cause distractions and cause you time in Photoshop later when you have to clone them out. So make sure the scene is clear of distractions, take an image and go from there. Spring is all about colour, so if you shoot in JPEG format, you'll be restricting how much you can edit the image once you get back to the computer. Switching to RAW format does take up more room on your memory card, but storage media such as SD and CF cards are far more affordable than they used to be, so this really isn't a problem. What's more, a RAW file holds more picture information and this allows you to edit a RAW image much more than a JPEG. For example, maybe you've overexposed an area of the image. If you've shot in RAW, this gives you more potential to rescue detail using software like Lightroom or Adobe Camera RAW. Some of the prettiest spring flowers don't hang around for long, so if there's a particular flower that you'd like to shoot, a little research will go a long way. Snowdrops come first in spring, followed by colourful daffodils and crocuses. Bluebells, perhaps the most striking of spring floral subjects, can appear from late March depending on the weather, but are only in their prime for around three to four weeks. When shooting close-up spring florals with a macro lens, focus can become a real issue. This is because the closer you get to the subject, the harder it is to keep a large zone of focus. Some photographers can be tempted to switch to f22, but this may not still be enough to create a large zone of focus and it will impair on image quality. Instead, I like to switch to f8 on aperture priority mode and take multiple images, shifting the point of focus to different areas in the frame. Later in Photoshop, I can use a technique called focus stacking to merge these layers together and have front to back sharpness throughout the whole frame. Just like shooting landscapes, the best time to capture spring florals is at first light and last light, when the warm, low, directional light reveals more of the subject's form and texture. Shoot in the midday sun and your image may suffer from harsh shadows. However, if you have to shoot at this time, there is a trick you can use to soften up your lighting. Grab your reflector again, 
but this time, unzip it and bring out the diffuser part, which is in the middle. All you need to do is block out the sun, and then you can take your shot with improved lighting. Now, as you might imagine, bending down for an extended period of time when you're shooting your spring florals can be hard work on the knees. So it's worth bringing along some kit that will make the experience a lot more pleasant. Knee pads are one of those padded mats you use when you're kneeling down in the garden. All work well, but I like to bring along a fold-out camping stool. All I need to do is set it up, sit on it, and take the load off. Okay, let's finish up with a couple of pro tricks you can use to really polish your spring florals. If you want to separate one of the subjects from the scene, all you need is some coloured card. All you need to do is place the coloured card behind a flower and the shallow depth of the field will create a seamless coloured background. Use green to replicate woodland or blue to replicate the sky. And what about replicating morning dew? Well, if you're out there early in the morning, it'll be there. But what if you turn up at midday? Well, all you need is one of those water sprayers. Give the flower a quick spray and that will replicate morning dew perfectly. Right, that's all from me. I hope you've enjoyed these tips and they help you to capture some amazing spring florals. For plenty more advice, head over to wexphotographic.com. See you later.